G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, have a look at that. Wednesday evening here in Australia and the market is down. Not by a whole lot, but just a little. 1.3%. So it got up to that kind of $3 trillion mark and we got a bit of a rejection from it. And again, that's to kind of be expected. What you need to remember is if you haven't been in this space for a while, people aren't always taking profits based on a simple price of one coin. So they don't do it based just on Bitcoin or Ethereum. There's a whole stack of things that they use to take profits. And what we can do is go have a look here. Three trillion. Again, that was that mark. It's a big even number. People just took profits at that stage. And look, I'm going to let you know right now, I did say I did take some profits last night, very small amount, less than 5%. And it wasn't really because I sort of thought we were going to get a rejection from here. But I did think, oh, it's always those big even numbers, like people are more likely to sell Bitcoin at 70,000 than $68,432. They just that's not what they do. Smart money will do things like that. They won't wait for big numbers because that's what a lot of ordinary traders do. But also sometimes they'll use, all right, $3 trillion. That sounds like a good time to take some profits. So what we can see is just an ever so slightly little little uh, retracement from there. Now, we'll have to wait and see whether this is going to be anything bigger or smaller. But there are things that we'll need to have a look at and we'll get to that shortly. But I just wanted to show you this chart. This is the overall total market cap. So again, we got up to that kind of $3 trillion mark. We just kind of tipped it and then we've got a bit of a rejection from there. Doesn't mean it's over, doesn't mean we're going into a bear market, but it could. We're not going to know really until sort of things play out. But there's no real indicators to say that there's any reason for a big retracement at the moment. But again, big even numbers, like again, Bitcoin at 70,000, probably see a bit of a retracement. Well, we did, we got up to sort of 68, uh, 69,000, so just shy of 70,000 again. People not waiting for the exact number, bit of a retracement, probably see it at 80, probably see it at 90, probably see it at 100,000. And after 100,000, you know, we'll probably be seeing things more around uh, 120, I think. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But I think that's got a lot to do with what's going on. But also, what else could have something to do with it is we created a CME gap over the weekend. So it starts... Sorry, yeah, I guess it sort of starts at 61,440 and goes all the way up to, what do we got here? About 62,895. So a lot of these gaps get closed. So it is definitely possible that we're probably going to see something may, maybe over the weekend, the next few days, and it'll be most likely be a wick that'll come down and close this. But look, there's no guarantees because we've got other CME gaps that haven't been closed. And in bull markets, they don't get closed all the time. But eventually when a bear market comes, usually is where a majority of them get closed. So we got one here around 61,000. Look, we got a really big one here. And think about this, all the way down at sort of 35,000. So that's quite a large one there. And then we got another even bigger one. Oh, look at this. Way down at sort of 24,000 to around about 26,000. I mean, you know, we can sort of take it to there. So 26,100 down to 24,655. So there's been CME gaps before that haven't been closed and chances are probably pretty good that they will get closed come the next bear market. But again, there's no guarantees because we've got lots of other uh, CME gaps, not lots, but we've got a few other CME gaps below that have never been closed either. So it's just something to keep in mind. Look, we've got another one uh, down here as well. So yeah, they do happen. Let's go back to the charts. All right, as we can see, Bitcoin dominance down ever so slightly, market down 1.3%. Uh, a little bit of volume there, not a whole lot. And again, Bitcoin now just under $66,500. Gas prices, uh, again, they're starting to climb. People are still getting sort of antsy. Again, jumping in and out of stable coins and, you know, transferring, you know, Ethereum into other coins and things like that. That's generally what affects that price mo mostly. But stable coins uh, play a really big part and Uniswap play a really big part. But also the NFTs, they're really what are chewing up uh, a majority of the uh, gas fees. So just something to keep in mind. Again, ETH 2.0. Let's, let's make it happen. All right, again, looks like a, a bit of a bloodbath, really. But again, it's only down 1.3%, so it's nothing 
too major, but in the end, 1.3% of $3 trillion is a little bit of money. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? There we go, Loopring, 45%. Uh, I, what is it? IOTEX, I don't even know what that is, uh, but that's up 33%. Uh, Kadena continues to just rally, but that's a JP Morgan sort of coin, or at least guys that used to work for JP Morgan. I'm always kind of nervous around, you know, really centralized kind of coins, including XRP, but XRP's been around for a while that I'm happy to, you know, put some money into it, and it shows that it's got you know, at least, you know, some years of, you know, history behind it where these new ones, be careful not to say it can't continue to pump. Solana's quite centralised, uh, you know, in sort of some regards, not quite centralised, but, you know, compared to Ethereum, Bitcoin, obviously, but any new project is going to be like that. So just something to keep in mind, but live peer up, Zcash, Quant, Litecoin doing nice, Chili's making a move, Stella, I mean, look, there are gains to be made. But we need to remember generally the market's down, but only just, only slightly. So what hasn't done well? Helium, Phantom, T-Fuel, Kasama, uh, KuCoin, SHIB just continues to go down, down another 5%. And again, that is what happens when something pumps as hard as SHIB did. And that's, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, and I think there's a report out that, what is it? 70 something percent of all Shiba Inu are held by 10 wallets. 70%. So that is super, super centralized. So again, if they all suddenly decide to sell, and I'm sure some of that is what's going on here, that really affects the price. So these are things that you need to think about when you're investing uh, into these coins. Some of them are highly, highly centralized. And unless you can, you know, get in at a good price and get out before, you know, the big players get out, then unfortunately, you're going to get wrecked. And I'm not knocking just SHIB, I'm saying that's a majority of any new coin that's just recently come out in the last year or two, they will be highly centralized. It takes, you know, five, a decade, you know, much like Bitcoin for things to become truly decentralized. So that doesn't mean they're bad coins. I'm just saying it's going to take a while for, you know, other people to, you know, buy in and truly have a decentralized sort of platform. That stuff doesn't happen overnight. Even Ethereum was very centralized and so too was Bitcoin in the early days. But they've been around for a while to be a whole lot less centralized. And look, in all fairness, even XRP is nowhere near as centralized as what it was. It's just that XRP or Ripple, I should say, Ripple Labs, they hold, I think, about 50% of all the XRP. It's just under 50%. I think it was 49, 48% last time I saw it. It might be down to 46. So like anything, it's getting less and less over time, but they did hold on to a lot of coins. So again, the market's down 1.3%, so not too much. But again, I think it's mainly to do with just that, you know, the 3 trillion, that was the point where people took uh, money. Again, it's that big hard number, 3 trillion. And again, now there's the CME gap that has been created. And we just need to watch that maybe Bitcoin, sorry, that's not where we're at anymore may come down to sort of around about sort of 61,000 over the weekend I think is when it would happen that's if it's going to happen but hey look it could happen tomorrow anything's possible we'll just have to wait and see now just a couple of stories I want to have a look at the SEC has put out a report and they are actually urging DeFi platforms to get in touch with them to help them get on top of where regulation might be now this is a yeah it can be a bit of a sneaky move so they can kind of see who's worried the most and you know get them to come in because the ones that are worried the most are probably the ones that are doing the most wrong and then they can you know pick out the easy targets to you know take to court and then once they can get some kind of you know precedent set against one DeFi platform then they can go after uh, a whole stack of others so it'll be interesting to see if any of the DeFi platforms have actually reached out you go down further in here and they're the SEC said that they have had engaging uh, discussions with certain DeFi platforms, but they don't specifically name anyone. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. But in all fairness, <laughs> there's going to be some kind of compromise. I don't know what the compromise is. I don't know how they're going to kind of meet in the middle. But for DeFi to really, you know, take hold, get mainstream adoption they are going to have to meet regulators somewhere in the middle. Exactly how that works, I don't know. But the DeFi 
platforms that are just really out there and you know kind of really dodgy and aren't really decentralized and all the rest of it the sec will eventually come after him you can 100 percent guarantee that uh, and if it's not the sec from like america it'll be some other uh, regulatory body that will come after them and look the sec says it's not just them that have control over DeFi. you know things like securities and that there's other agencies as well so just something interesting and i'm sure there may have been you know one or two DeFi platforms that have sort of reached out to get some sort of clarification but you know obviously no one has been charged yet that we know of except for sorry that's not true the guy from Terra Luna, Terra, Terra Luna Do Kwan, uh, he received something from the SEC. But I'm not sure exactly what's happening with that because I know there was a story saying that he's actually suing the SEC for the way they came after him. And it's to do with Mirror Protocol. It's not actually Terra Luna itself. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I think where the SEC is going to get most of these platforms is through the stable coins in all fairness. They, they'll crack down on the stable coins really hard and it'll make the DeFi platforms that don't have regulated stable coins, you know, probably something like uh, USDC and things like that, it'll just make it really hard for them to be able to uh, operate without using something like that because I think a majority of the stable coins that are out there now, if they aren't fully audited, audited and doing AML and KYC and all the rest of it, uh, I think that the SEC comes after them and those platforms will get hit really hard. But again, there are no guarantees. We just, you know, this is such a crazy new space and it's always moving so fast that it's hard for regulators to really keep up with and get on top of it. So maybe DeFi can succeed, you know, and not have to worry about the regula regula regulators uh, and regulatory uh, pressure and things like that. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I can't imagine that, yeah, if the SEC and, you know, all the other government agencies really want to go after DeFi, the DeFi can truly uh, thrive. But again, we'll have to wait and see. All right. PayPal beats expected Q3 results and intends to increase its crypto offerings. I have no doubt they do. Everywhere is going to get onto crypto. The big banks are starting to use it. We heard about ING looking to get in on DeFi, you know, get some yield and things like that. Because what the banks have now, they just cannot offer any yield whatsoever. You know, it's at best, you know, point zero something percent. Whereas you can go to DeFi and, you know, you're looking at 6 to 8%, you know, 20% plus in other places. And so the big banks and that, they all have to get onto it and they are all going to move to crypto. Because it's the only market that can, you know, freely offer those kind of returns because they don't have all the middlemen and, and you know taking their bits and pieces and that's the problem with the traditional finance is the money goes through so many different hands and everybody's taking a little bit that it just makes it impossible to you know have any yield whereas crypto it doesn't have that it's programs doing it there are no real middlemen it's just a simple program that will do it for you so paypal yep no doubt they're going to do really well but it's not all roses for everybody because we go here, Coinbase's profits drop 75% in Q3, in quarter three, sorry, despite Dogecoin and SHIB listing. So again, it's, it's and it'll be completely the opposite uh, in some other quarter. PayPal suddenly won't do as well and Coinbase will do really well. So it's just one of those things. It's not always going to be one company making all the money and other companies not. It will, you know, chop and change and it'll be dependent on a number of other things. But PayPal doing well, Coinbase uh, down 75%. Like that is a lot. But in all fairness, that's because the prices are starting to go up now. So we don't have as many people buying because most people are now just holding. Whereas when the prices were going down, everyone wanted to buy. They were like, this is a low, or at least the smart money. You know, the smart money was going, yep, I'm buying up this stuff. And now that it's going up, the smart money is not buying as much. And we're waiting for retail unfortunately, to come in and then they pump up the bags. That's just the way it works. Uh, we shouldn't call them retail, just the latecomers, because there's still institutions buying as well. It's not, you know, always just retail that uh, come in last. Even some institutions do, but it's the people who get in early. Uh, and again, they buy the dips. They don't get caught up and buy the pumps because unfortunately, that's what's going to happen. There's going to be a news report saying, you know, Bitcoin broke $100,000 and that's when retail is just going to go, 
oh my god that was dead you know months ago because they probably just haven't really been reading about it and now it's a hundred thousand and they're going to want to pile in and that is yeah it's a lesson that all investors have to learn though unfortunately like i learned it and i'm sure if you're watching my channel you probably have learned it or if you haven't learned it you're going to learn it uh, at some stage that is just the way it is unless you're really lucky and just uh, never have to go through that but i think that's it's kind of a rite of passage when it comes to investing and things like that that you've unfortunately got to be the people who buy into the pumps and then get dumped on and uh, get a little bit sort of not crushed but you learn your lessons and then you become the smarter investors and if we're all smart investors there'd be no money because no one would be buying we'd all be waiting uh, for something to dump and that's just not how it works all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another i think the markets will continue to go up but we just probably need a little bit of a cool off hopefully you're still on that gain train and i'll see you next time